Hello everybody, ADG here with a review of the Bachman Broadway Limited train set. This is an N-scale train set which Bachman produces. It's essentially a reissue of some of their older parts, which we'll see in a second. First, a little background on the namesake train, which I must get into, as a lot of people constantly confuse this, and I did too for the longest time. Many people assume that the Broadway Limited was named after the world-famous street in New York City where most plays take place. Unfortunately, no, that's completely inaccurate. The Broadway Limited is named after the, quote, way that the train traveled, a.k.a. the railway, or short for the railway, I should say, which was Spore Ways, a.k.a. very broad. And therefore, because it was very broad, and because it had limited stops, the Pennsylvania Railroad nicknamed its train running between New York and Chicago, which is this train's destinations, the Broadway Limited. So just a little clear, clear up on that. As we continue with this particular train set, it looks all new. It looks very impressive at first glance, as typical with any product. Let's see here. We have our we have our locomotive, which is an 060, which is a 460, pardon me. Pardon me, I thought that was a, for some reason I thought it was an 060, but it's a 460 steam locomotive. Some standard stock from Bachman. We have the usual Bachman power pack as displayed in the front. I'll go into more detail later on. And then we have these coaches, which seem all new. Right over here, a combine. A standard coach and an observation coach. One might think, oh, wow, Bachman really went the extra mile here and retooled and or built new coaches for this particular set. Actually, no. And I'll explain exactly what happened there in just a bit. Let's go right into it and actually start opening the box up. Here, let me go get... Open. Before I do that, actually, let me go over the back here for it. As you can see here, it has the usual description of what the train, the usual description of what you can do with the train, the usual <clears throat> propaganda, as I call it. Admittedly, what you can do if you were to expand the track sport. This train itself, I should mention, comes with a standard oval of track, nothing fancy here. That's pretty much typical for most Bachman trains. In fact, I don't think Bachman makes a set that has a figure eight that does not include any kind of sort of trestle or bridge or set or anything else like that. Anyway. This brief overview of the box, the different layouts you can build with certain expansion packages. I should also like to point out before I go any further that, like all model railroad equipment these days, this train is rated for, for people 14 years and older, so if you're younger than this, this set is not for you. Again, this is an adult's train set thing, adult's toy, you might say. It is, or model, as we call it, it is not a kid's toy. Now, without further ado, let's get this open. Again, it's a tab release box, so this comes right up. The seven slides right out. If anyone's curious, I acquired this at Charles Rose Supply during one of my trips to Boston this past fall, I believe it was. Yes, it was fall. I paid just under $200 for it. These retail for somewhere around 200, uh, closer to $300, I believe, under Bachman's website. Amazon has them for a little bit over $200, so pretty decent deal for what I paid for it. So looking inside the box, we see we have the before-mentioned equipment. We have some curved tracks, straight tracks right here, as well as a power pack. We also have the set itself. We have, pull this apart, we also have the coaches. And if you're an old-school Bachman person like myself, you might find these look Somewhat familiar in a strange way. Well, you're not wrong. If we take a look right over here at an old school Bachman coach from the 80s, we see it looks very familiar. In fact, maybe too familiar. Except for the Rapido Cutlass, as we can see, this is essentially the same coach. Has the same assemblies. The wheels are slightly different. Looks at like the flanges were adjusted. These had some issues with their flanges on some layouts. The earlier edition, there are some slight variants, but they are essentially the same coach right down to the way those shell mounts in position here. I've never actually been able to take one of these apart, and I don't intend to start now, but essentially, yeah, these are not new designs. There are reissues of these older coaches, except with updated trucks to now have actual knuckle couplers on them. I guess this is great if you wanted to upgrade one of these trains, but for the fact that they use pegs to secure their trucks in place, I'm not sure you'd be able to get these off again. One of the more unique features that has been carried over from the previous Bachman models of this type is the combine car's sliding door, which actually does work. Of course, it won't work on camera now that I'm trying to show it to you. There we go. It does slide. There you, really, you really can't tell much from inside it. Focus, there we go. Just really reveals the plastic. But again, it's a nice little feature to have. The original Bachman cars do this as well. 
And as we can see, the old school Bachman cars like this one with the signified by the silhouettes in the window do have this feature as well. <clears throat> it's a real pain to slide it open. You really can't see much inside, except the weight, which should be secured. In this case, it is. Uh, again, I have yet to figure out how to get one of these old school coaches apart. That's going to be one of my projects, I guess, coming up to see if I can take one apart and fix it, because I have quite a few of these that are broken. Because for a while there, they were very inexpensive to get a hold of. And I bought quite a few of them. One final note on these Bachman coaches, they are not actually lighted, as we can see here. The old school one up here, as we see, has these two wipers, so it can illuminate lights inside the coach itself with silhouettes of the passengers. The new variant, again, signified by its knuckle couplers and screw-down knuckle couplers, I should say, does not have the wipers for the wheels, indicating no lighting is installed, and it lacks the silhouettes from the original coach, as we see here. It just has plain holes in the plastic with some plastic underneath them. Uh, as you say, see-through plastic beneath the holes to simulate windows, whereas the old-school one has, and you can hear the weight is rattling around on this one, the silhouettes of the passengers and has lights inside it. So, you're, so again, Bachman taketh away yet again. Yet one last final note on these coaches. Despite the fact that they are in fact equipped with metal wheels, which by itself was a nice touch, most entry-level coaches these days, the 65-footers from Atlas, for example, on their trainman line, come in with plastic wheels, is that they weigh notably less than their predecessors. That's an unfortunate oversight. But I must say, the metal wheels are a very nice and very much welcome touch by Bachmann. In addition to the underbody detailing, the one difference I should mention on the coaches before I go any further is that the um, one add-on I can find, I have not ever been able to find one of these, but I think they existed in the 80s, is this observation car. I think it was just a combine car plus two coaches on those sets, but it appears they've added this in to, uh, Bachmann, I should say, added this in to give it a little bit more flavor, if you will. Anyway, I saved the best for last. Let's take a look at Bachmann's locomotive. For this, is a 460 Pennsylvania locomotive. The quality at first glance looks really great until we look underneath it and we see it has the rather infamous traction tires, which tells you that this is not a great um, quality locomotive. Whenever you need traction tires, it usually means there are quality control issues with how the engine gets traction. And considering how rough some of Bachmann's HO scale steam engines run, I'm not expecting miracles from this. I have no intention of converting it for DCC. I'm probably just going to run it as a DC engine on a DCC layout and just run it into the ground because I literally have no need for it. Might help if I put this back in the right place, wouldn't it? Another note on the locomotive for this particular set. It's, again, much like the coaches recycled from other products that Bachmann produced and or produces. This particular variation was available at one point with DCC, readiness out of the box, as well as DCC and sound equipped. Currently, I don't believe it's available as that anymore. You can still probably find it in stock at your local hobby shop. But just to note again, this is an old design that was recycled, except in this case, the company took the DCC readiness, as well as, of course, the sound equipment out of it in order to meet the budget for this particular train set. Now, while I could give a more thorough testing with the tracks included with this particular set, I figured what better way to do this than on my actual holiday layout, which is still under construction as of the time I'm making this video. With the holidays coming on, I've been working very hard on it. It's been coming together very nicely. Now I've got my tree up there, as you see, finally. I'm going to get have to put some more ornaments on that, it looks like. Anywho, let's give this thing a try and see exactly how well it works. Because this is an analog engine, again, I'm going to be using address 0 to command it. So let's put 0. Actually, no, first let me exit here. Let's go to loco, 0. Loco again to get it into control. Turn the power on. It's going to make some weird noises. Back it up there and grab the coaches. Would stalled out. That's typical Bachman, I don't intend this thing to run very well. Again, this is not going to be converted. It looks like it's already off the track. That's not a good sign. I do not intend to convert this engine, so if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's not worth selling these because there's no money in them. So really, it's one of those things where it's not worth me doing anything with. So it's either going to work or it isn't. Okay, with that on the track finally and in position and coupled up, let's give this thing a try. Let's go to forward. Throttle up gently. Well, it might, I was actually in forward already. That's strange. That's about as fast as it's going to go, it appears. Again, I'm running this on analog to be per this is a D This is a DCC layout. I'm accepting this train on the analog, so... Comes right around the back across the bridge. What's my massive gorge there? Of 
across the revealer, which it most definitely needs, and across the diamonds. Looks pretty nice, I gotta say, running. But again, that's all the speed I'm gonna get out of it. That's about as much as these coaches can be expected to do. Again, as I said before, the coaches are not lit, which would have probably been very much appreciated in this sort of environment. And that is flat out. Now, bottom line, this isn't too imp too impressive of a set considering what its charges. The coaches themselves are far are very much not on par from what I've seen from previous Bachman iterations of these coaches. In fact, I'll demonstrate. I'll take this thing onto the secondary main line for you in a second and show you the difference. Because yeah, these coaches are just not reliable in terms of going through tight turns compared to what they were originally back in the day. They also are noticeably lighter, I noticed. Bachman has done this. They've been cutting back the weights they put in their cars. I'm going to do another video on that, in fact. Again, this is a me and again, this is in a bid to save even more money. Though it's really at the expense of the product. It really turns it into a third-rate product. So let's stop it right there. Let me try backing this into that siding over here. There we go. Just do my double-slip switch. Let's back into that now. Let's take it onto the main line. And back into the secondary. And I'm pretty sure we're going to see what I'm pretty sure is going to happen, as always, with these newer stock Bachman parts. This is again Bachman. This is again that Bachman track we're running. This is Kato Uni tracks. And actually, stay on the track. That's a shock. <laughs> that I wasn't expecting. Okay, clearly doesn't like that switch I just put it through, but I did make it in here after I got past the switch. Well, the other cars stay on track. It's just the one that it's just the locomotive that didn't like it. Nope, does not like that switch for some strange reason. Don't know why. Coaches make it through, but the locomotive just does not like it. So we have a railer right there. Car couplers are not very reliable. They keep coming unhooked. I keep losing that on the main line. All right, now let's now back this guy onto the main line. Let's back him out of here and go onto this track right there. Take him across the gorge, which I don't intend this thing to make it through. I think we're about to have a major train derailment here. Now it actually worked. Oh, how do you like that? That would have helped if I had set that s switch correctly. Let's go back through again and let me set the switch correctly now. I'll pull that one to straight and I'll try to back into my station. Let's this here. across the gorge. Let me throw that switch and turn the power on. The reason why I can get away with doing this in part is that the Kato tracks insulate when you throw them, these switches I should say. That's something that's common in the British standards and the other countries, but in the US, they're the tracks are always live unless you physically tell them not to be live. In this case, unless the points are open to the particular track you're going, they're going there insulated, which helps out a lot here. Let's see if they can make this tight turn. Oh, and I don't believe that it's actually working, except the engine's stalling. Quality control there. If I do start running this set more often, I'm not going to use that engine, that's for sure. I have several others that I can run. Got an FA I'm working on, and I got an Alco PA from Kato that could do the job pretty well. Let's go back it all the way in. 
bring it all the way into the little station over here in town. Those are super tight turns. I forgot what the radius is, but those are the tightest turns that Kaido makes that we're going across right now. Nope. Erratic Performance is this locomotive's name. I think I may be doing a number on it by doing it like this, apparently, but... All right, let's run it again. Let's keep going. I gotta fix that. Okay, in we go right over here to the station. Yeah, it's stalled again, but this time I can just get a hold of it and make it move. There we go, it moved again. Let's back it all the way in, all the way in. And there it is. So it actually will run pretty well, surprisingly. I didn't expect it to do that well to actually make it across my gorge. So maybe this isn't such as so bad as I thought. I have tried it on a few other sections of track and it has derailed. The train does not like that switch on the entry point of my area of my yard over here. Which I have to kind of redo anyway, but still... Something to note, let's go switch her around and go forward again. And take it back to the main line. See how it does forward. And those are the tightest tracks that Kato makes. Uh, if I can get the radius here, in fact, I think I have one in here. It's one of these tracks, the R150... 45. That's the tightest radius you can get from Kato's Unitrack system. It's, it's from their C or Compact sets. They do, they do wonders for making a small railroad like this for in compact areas, but oh boy, are they tight. Okay, it looks like it derailed. Again. And it stalled. <laughs> Not sure if my track is dirty. I just put this down, so I don't think it got dirty that quickly, but... Over here, coming across the gorge again, and it gets stuck right on the switch. Well, that sucks does not like these switches. This thing is very strange in that it does not like switches, apparently. This engine seems to jump all over the place. The cars themselves are fine, as you can see, but just the engine does not like that at all. It does not dig them. Why, well, I don't know. Again, this is back when quality talking again. <laughs> Their steam engines are not known for being the greatest, so I'm always very hesitant to recommend one of these sets. But anyway, not a, a decent showing for these, for these cars. Let me go get a different locomotive, a decent one, and see what it does. It's, I really am starting to get curious now as to what is making these things perform so poorly here. If it's really that locomotive that's the only thing holding this set Okay, back. so out of professional curiosity and the fact that I am a total train buff, I'm going to substitute this Santa Fe RS2, Kato RS2, for the steam locomotive. This one has been converted for DCC operations, so there hopefully I don't know what that was all about. Wouldn't do anything and then suddenly it took, did everything. <laughs> there we go, around the track again, making its way around the back of the tree. Through the double slip switch, which is set to straight, so it'll go across the gorge. Going nice and slow here, because these are kind of tight tracks. That other track over there isn't too tight, though, but as we get closer, it's going to get tighter. Across the switches over the ladder. Better find a way of better doing that, or I just have to keep running slowly across it. And all the way through here into town. Across the disused locomotive, which I'm still working on, and <laughs> into Wink Wink on that F.A. And it actually stayed on the track, which is shock shocking. Nothing derailed. Let's pull into the siding. And yeah, looks like this actually works. Let's go back again with this engine and see what happens. Reversing it. For a little more power here. And this is DCC converted. This decoder seems to act a little bit weird when I give it commands. It's kind of strange. That's not the original frame that was on this one. I was in the middle of converting an engine and ended up swapping this one for that. I'm going a little bit faster than I'd like here, but I'm just going to leave it alone. I think it'll be fine. Looks good. Through the double slip switch, which is actually just going straight. Back around into town and there we are made it no problems at all so I'm pretty impressed with that let's try one last thing let me throw that double slip switch back here with my controller right over here I think it's actually this one right over here yep that was it let me now take it on to the other branch and see how it does there 
Let's go with throttle up forward. But pull around and see what he does there. I have a feeling I'm going to have problems here, strangely enough. I just have a strange feeling. Yep, there we go. Double slip switch had a little trouble, but it went it got back on the track and it worked ultimately. Now we're on the third main line. Let me close that switch now before we have a derailment. I have restricted speed zones. Let's pick up a little speed here now. This is again the tightest of the three main lines I've installed. This is sort of the third branch which I'm going to run freight on. I'm still waiting for my warehouse to show up. Once that shows up, I'm going to install it. With a different engine, this really runs nicely. That's the kind of engine I would want to run with this, an RS-type engine. Not that I'm an Alco guy or anything, but, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, that works pretty well. Okay, let me throw that switch again and get him out of there. There it goes, didn't respond initially. I have a feeling I'm going to have a problem now going through that double slip switch backwards. I think I'm going to install some re-railers on the side here just to make it work better. Yep, there it goes, it's derailing, they're all coming off the track or I just heard them do it. Nope, seems okay, it looks like they came back on or it just clicked rough. All I care about is if it made it through the switch. Here we go, straight into the actual platform. And yeah, it seemed to work pretty well. So it looks like this is slightly off the track here, I'd have to check. But overall, it looks like this is a pretty good running train set, considering. And I'm pretty impressed with the with the coaches themselves. The locomotive, not so much. The uh, yeah, the car came slightly off, it looks like, coming through. But I'll fix that up, put a railer in place. Just to make it work a little bit better. But yeah, it's not bad effort from Bachman, although the price is kind of high. And so, summing up Bachman's Broadway Limited N-Scale train set. I wasn't expecting to like this set. I thought it was going to be more sort of Bachman half assism if you will. Sort of not really made up to the standards it needed to be. Looks better than it actually is supposed to be. Sort of drowned in these beautiful images of that engine. And those cars being pulled around a nice layout. And then, of course, having it be something that needed to be pushed around the layout. Which did happen occasionally, but not like I thought it would. Bottom line, this was actually a really nice train set with the exception of the locomotive. Every chance this thing got, it either had a problem staying on the tracks, one of which admittedly, as I noted in my subtitles in the video, or I should say lower thirds, that there were problems with the actual switch once or twice. Other times it was just the train being bad at, at handling the switch tracks. This is down to the pony wheels not having enough tension on them and a few other weird quirks. And the fact that there isn't much weight on that steamer at all, hence the reason why it has traction tires. That's what I was kind of indicating. Again, quality control. This should have probably been tested before it was unleashed on myself or anyone else buying this set. I also note on the back of the locomotive, it has this really spring connection thing where it has these two sort of metal connections that make contact with the tender coupler device, this is in fact how the power gets distributed from the rear pickups to the front. This doesn't appear to work. I have tried this several times. It just doesn't work. If it did, it, the train wouldn't stall as much. The locomotive, I should say, wouldn't stall as much. Bottom line, there really isn't anything here to write home about about the locomotive itself, although it does work as long as you don't ask too much of it, and that's unfortunate, especially for the price point, which I'll get to in a moment. The coaches are actually pretty darn good. I was not expecting to be this impressed by them. What's nice about them is that they are capable of being converted with the included couplers. I didn't show them here, but this does the set does come, I should say, with a set of Rapido couplers that can easily be swapped out for the knuckles. So if you have a set of these old Bachman coaches, as I showed also when I went over the coaches in detail from the 80s, 70s, 80s, and I think late, early 90s, and I think even late 90s, I don't know when they stopped production on them. And as long as you have, um, if you have those coaches and like, would like to convert one of these over to work with it, you can. It works really well. I've tried it, actually, and I was able to do that with a few other coaches I had laying around. 
just running with the old coaches with the new ones. And you could, you could tell the difference in the paint, of course, but other than that, it worked really well. And the coaches themselves aren't quite as well weighted as they should have been compared to the original Bachman coaches, and they're not lit. All that said, though, they do the job, and they're better than some of the other things, like the Atlas <clears throat> 65 foot coaches that I've bought. I haven't reviewed that yet, but I'm going to get to it. Those leave quite a bit to be desired compared to these, so I'm pretty impressed with them. It could have been better, but not bad. So, summing this up, essentially, not bad could be better. Not the worst trains that I ever got, certainly not the greatest either. It certainly was, that said, a lot of fun to play with this past Christmas on my christmas theme layout, which is when this was shot. My apologies for not getting this out sooner. I've just been so busy lately. And now I've come to the point in my review where I must discuss the price of this train set, which is, well, quite disgusting. Direct from Bachman, the price is a whopping 355 bucks. Please note, that's again for an analog train set. No DCC, let alone sound on board. No DCC controller. Just a plain old ordinary uh, power pack. No scenery included. Nothing else. Now, the retailers will give you a notable discount on this set. You can probably find it around, I've seen it around 220 218 somewhere around there. I've seen it at 230 It kind of bounces all over the place. That's still kind of high, for my opinion, what you're getting here. Again, it's kind of basic, although the coaches themselves aren't bad for what it is, and they are metal wheel equipped, something you don't see a lot. I personally paid about $200 for this set at Charles Rose Supply located up in Malden, Massachusetts on a trip I was on at the time. Bottom line, I can recommend this set with the caveat that A, you be aware of the locomotive's issues, which can be dealt with if you're willing to mess with it, or perhaps replace it with a more capable locomotive, and B, that you don't pay more than $230 or so, because really it's not worth much more than that. And that's going to do it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. Please like and subscribe, and as always, keep the metal side down.